Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how have you been? It's been a while, I've missed you, uh, you know, but anyway, let's get into this new video. My friend Jaron and I decided to construct a list of underrated movies that we think everyone should see. Now, uh, we sort of got the idea from Chris Stockman's book, The Film Boss Bucket List, but we thought, you know, that list was mostly blockbusters and stuff everyone's already heard of, so we thought we'd try and make a list of some of our favourite smaller, independent, underrated movies that not a lot of people checked out and just kind of fell by the wayside. So, uh, this list isn't in order, and uh, it's movies from 2000 onwards, and uh, we just thought we'd, you know, try and recommend some movies for you all to see and talk, just give some attention to some underrated gems. So, uh, here's Jaron, he's going to get us started with the list. Hey guys, just want to let you know, these are movies that we're both really passionate about. We had a list of about... 100 movies, we had to whittle it down to this as well. Uh, it was really hard to do, so most of the movies you suggest we probably already, like, just had to scratch off. We got to about 55, it was so hard to get rid of the last ones too. We really had to cut down this list. There were so many movies. Give us, uh, like, throw some suggestions at us of movies you think are underseen that came out in the 2000s. Uh, yeah, as I said, most of them we've probably already listed, but there's also some we probably haven't thought of, some we might even chuck in if we had thought of it before, some that maybe we'll, we have another opinion on, stuff like that. We'd love to hear from you. Um, um, I, I love reading comments, love watching Jacob's videos, love seeing all of you guys respond to give us feedback and stuff like that, it'd be really cool. Um, thank you Chris Duckman for giving this idea of a list, uh, although really, you really should have used that opportunity to express, uh, you know, interest into movies that haven't been seen much, uh, instead of just like, who has three Marvel movies on their bucket list? Everyone's seen the Marvel movies, it's just a stupid list. Which is why we think this one's really cool. That's just our opinion though. You may love the bucket list, and that's fine. So I hope you enjoyed the list. Getting on to number one is a movie called The Iron Giant. Now The Iron Giant technically is a 1999 release in the US, but we live in Australia and it came out in about April, May of Australia. Uh, so we're counting it, you know? This is by Brad Bird, it's got the voice of Vin Diesel, Jennifer Aniston, it's a really underseen movie, it's really cool, it has a really strong message for children, it's one of the better animated movies I've ever seen. Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream is directed by Darren Aronofsky, one of my favourite directors in here, Black Swan, The Wrestler and everything. And let me just say, Requiem for a Dream is probably the most effective Don't Do Drugs advertisement ever. It is harrowing, it is terrifying, the acting is fantastic, and uh, honestly, I think, despite the fact that it's rated uh, R, I think schools should show this as a deterrent against drug use because it's, it is that effective a movie and I think it is a must watch for everyone. Hey guys, so the next movie I have for you is Donnie Darko, directed by Richard Kelly. Donnie Darko is on a tiny budget and it made even less than that, but the thing is it's got a massive cult following, but I don't care, it's one of my favourite films of all time and I want to spread as much word to it as I can. So it's got Jake Gyllenhaal, it's got Jenna Malone, it's got Drew Barrymore, it's got even Seth Rogen a little bit. Um, it is so funny, it's so dark, it's so sad, and it's a really, really cool twist on the sci-fi genre and coming of age genre. I think everyone should watch this. Uh, this is the director's cut as well, you can watch that if you want, but I think the ambiguity, the ambiguity of the original is way better. Spirited Away, it's my favourite Miyazaki film, favourite Studio Ghibli, it's my favourite animated film ever. It's brilliant, the voice acting is beautiful, and if I had to describe Spirited Away in one word, it would be magical. This movie is magical, it will make you feel like a kid again, the imagination and just heart that it has is incredible. It's so much fun to watch, uh, it's dark in parts and it's just, it's just magical. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful movie that more people need to see. Don't let the fact that it's Japanese deter you. It is fucking fantastic. Cons considering it came out back in 2001, uh, the visuals are amazing. Hey guys, the next one I have for you is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Now, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is directed by Shane Black, and it's well known, but it's on a tiny budget. It didn't even make that much money back either. And to me, he just produced The Nice Guys this year, widely loved. Produced Iron Man, he made Iron Man 3, that was alright. This movie is fantastic, this is a really cool spy espionage comedy. Uh, it's so funny, Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kimmer. Robert Downey Jr. is just a regular guy thrown into this big, big, larger-than-life scenario, and it's so funny, so hilarious, and so memorable. Hard Candy is a small movie and it was one of the first movies Ellen Page ever appeared in and uh, it's brilliant. I watched this for the first time not long ago. It's on Netflix so if you got Netflix definitely check out Hard Candy. It's about this 14 year old girl who sort of, she lures this pedophile. Well, 
he's yeah he's a guy who's into young girls played by Patrick Wilson and she sort of lures him and starts hanging out with him and stuff and then gets back to his house and basically just starts psychologically torturing him and stuff and she's she's a badass and it's just a great great fun little movie Hey guys, the next movie I have for you is Guillermo del Toro's masterpiece, in my opinion, Pan's Labyrinth. Now, Pan's Labyrinth uh, has a tiny budget again, made nothing, and what it does is it explores this crazy world. It's basically Alice in Wonderland for adults. It explores this crazy world of this girl who uh, is, a, her father is like this big general in a world war, and basically her life's gone to shit, and she's just, she, she has to create this imaginary world around her uh, where, she, where she isn't in a bad scenario, and starts questioning whether this world is actually real or not. It's really good watch and I recommend it to everyone. Children of Men. Now I know a lot of people have heard of this one, but honestly it is one of my favourite sci-fi movies of all time. More people need to watch it. Uh, the cinematography in it is just gorgeous. Uh, the message about humanity in the dystopian future uh, is brilliant. It's a brilliant concept. Uh, the tracking shots are amazing. And if you have not seen Children of Men, uh, it is a must watch. Uh, it's one of the best movies of the decade so far and not enough people talk about it. Hey, the next movie I don't actually own because it's so little it's not even out in Australia and uh, on Blu-ray and that is Stranger Than Fiction. Stranger Than Fiction is got Will Ferrell. It's an incredible movie. What it is about is about a guy, a regular mundane guy, and he starts hearing narration in his head and it's narrating every single thing he does right before he does, right, does it and you know he gets so freaked out he hunts it down and, and he tracks it down to this author who's trying to write her last book and she always writes tragedy books the character always dies at the end and he's trying to stop her from finishing the book because he's found out it's her and it's a really really compelling sci-fi type of movie surprisingly and it's, and it's really good it's really funny Will Ferrell's best performance in my opinion I recommend to watch The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford now if I could only put one movie on this list this would be it. I saw this movie for the first time a few months ago and it absolutely floored me. It is perfect in every every way. An Oscar nominated performance by Casey Affleck. The cinematography is fucking gorgeous. It is so well directed by Andrew Dominic. Uh, it, it's genius. Uh, the title is subversive. It's a movie about how popularity in the media uh, can, can spin how a person is seen and it is genius. It is so smart. It is an understated western and it has to be seen by everyone. It's one of the best movies I have ever seen. The next movie I have for you is by Tim Burton, and yes, it stars, it stars Don, Johnny Depp and Helena Bottom Carter, but it is The Swing Todd of Demon Barber of Fleet Street. This whole movie is in song, even like there's, there's some passages of talking, but they're always to a beat, and then there's song. Uh, really great performances by everyone, and I think this is one of his most underrated movies, because the how he got this movie to work so good is incredible. It got some mixed reviews, didn't make a lot of money, but honestly, I think this is a really underrated movie, and when I watched it again, I... I loved it. I thought it was a fantastically well-crafted movie and I recommend it to everyone, especially people who like musical type of movies. Sunshine, directed by Danny Boyle, is one of my all-time favourite sci-fi movies. Once again, it's about uh, the Earth, the sun is dying and a mission's already been sent to try and rejuvenate it and it failed, so these astronauts are on a mission to nuke the sun, basically, to save it. And it's brilliant. Uh, the acting is great. There's a lot of, you know... Uh, chemistry between the actors on board the ship and the visuals are beautiful, the music is beautiful and uh, the third act kind of descends into kind of madness. I liked it, it could have been better but honestly overall this is a really really powerful film. The next movie I have is by my favourite director David Fincher which is a crime that's on this list because every David Fincher movie should be well known and this is Zodiac, it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr, Mark Ruffalo, it's an incredible cast, it's an incredible movie, this is the best true like true serial killer movie ever made. David Fincher makes has made the best false serial killer movie ever and true serial killer movie in Seven and Zodiac. Zodiac is so detail oriented and it crafts this guy who's just who's just he's got an obsession with just with with the Zodiac and and it gets to him and he starts he's, it's I can't really explain it very well, guys. I'm sorry, but I just just please go out and watch this. It's an incredible movie. It needs to be experienced by everyone. Once, directed by John Carney, is probably the best we've ever seen in terms of the modern musical. It's one of my favourite musicals ever. Uh, it, star it stars Glenn Hansard as this like struggling musician, and it's basically sort of a romance, a non romancy romance. He meets this girl, and uh, you know they bond over each other's love of music, and they end up starting a band and making an album together, and it's just a really, really fun movie. The songs are great. Uh, great dialogue, and uh, it's just a really, really heartwarming and heartbreaking at times movie. Also, check out Begin Again by the same director. It is also fantastic. 
The next movie I have is by a director called James Mangold. Not many people even like this movie, surprisingly. Actually, only a few don't like this, like including Jacob. Well, he likes it, but uh, anyway, this movie I absolutely adored when I watched it for the first time this year is 310 to Yuma. It stars Russell Crowe, Christian Bale. Christian Bale is this regular farm owner. He wants to prove himself to his children, to his wife. And when Russell Crowe, a notorious criminal, comes through, uh, he, he escaped from jail many times. Christian Bale, uh, citizen arrests him and tries to get him on the train 310 to Yuma and take him back to prison and try and prove himself to his family. And it becomes really more than that. It's a character piece, it's a great western, and it's a really, really great watch. Into the Wild, I believe Sean Penn directed it, and it stars Emil Hirsch as this uh, Chris McCandless. He went, it's a true story, he went off into the wild alone, sold all his possessions, and uh, you know, I'm not going to spoil what happened out there, but it is a great, 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 great movie. It does get a little hipster pretentious at times, but I think it's a great, great little movie that not enough people talk about, and uh, you know, it has a lot of great philosophical observations on life, and the cinematography is beautiful. And it really is just a great portrayal of this character. It shows the good and the bad of Chris McCandless. Hey guys, the next movie I have for you, you may even consider, like, why is this on the list? This is just an average movie. But to me, this is one of the best comedies ever made, is Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah Marshall is directed by Nicholas Stoller. Uh, Nicholas Stoller has gone on to do the Neighbours movies, Get Him to the Greek. And this, in my opinion, is his masterpiece. It's written by Jason Segel, who's one of the best writers in the world. He wrote Muppets. He's, he's, he's got a keen eye for comedy and really heartfelt comedy. This can make me laugh. It can make me cry. All in the space of 10 seconds. This And, and it's non-stop gags. Paul Rudd is amazing in this, uh, everyone comes to play, Christian, uh, Kristen Bell, sorry, uh, um, cut this, I'm trying to remember his name, Russell Brand is hilarious, uh, especially Paul Rudd again, and Jason Segel is just the star, this is an incredible movie, one of my favourites, I watch this at least like once every two months. In Bruges, the featured debut of playwright turned filmmaker Martin McDonagh, and this is, again, one of my favourite movies of all time. Uh, it's about two hitmen, Clever Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, uh, who have to go into hiding on, in Bruges in Belgium after a job gone wrong. It's hilarious. Uh, it's actually really, really... Like, the drama hits you hard. It really hits you hard uh, because of what this Colin Farrell character did. Uh, it's hilarious, it's brilliant, the visuals are beautiful, the music is beautiful, and it needs to be watched by everyone. I could watch this movie every day and never get tired of it. Hey guys, the next movie I have for you you probably haven't even heard of before, and that's a crime. It's Defendor. Defendor with Woody Harrelson had a tiny, tiny, tiny budget, debuted at lots of festivals, didn't really come out in many cinemas, made pretty much zero money, and that is a shame because Defendor with Woody Harrelson, it's a send-up of the comedy of the, of the superhero genre, sorry, it's Arthur Poppington, he has he has a lot of mental health issues. When he was a kid, his dad was mur his dad and his dad father and mother were murdered, and he has to come up and he has a superhero and tries to fright, uh, fight crime because he has a bad history with drugs and stuff, and he wants to save everyone he can from drugs. It's really heartfelt. It's really sad. It's really really funny. I just picked this up uh, blind buy a few years back. It is an incredible movie. Kat Dennings is really good in it. This is one of Woody Harrelson's one of my favorite performances from him. Honestly, this is it's hard to find, but if you can find it, it's a really it's a really short movie too. I recommend you give it a watch because this is one of my favorite uh, superhero movies of all time. Woody Harrelson's incredible, and it's just it's just a really really great movie that is criminally underseen. Now I'm sure you can see by this list that I'm a sci-fi fan. This is Moon, directed by Duncan Jones, uh, the son of David Bowie. It was his directorial debut. Uh, he went on to direct Source Code and Warcraft, which wasn't that good, but Moon is fantastic. The whole movie is Sam Rockwell. He plays two different characters. Uh, he is alone on a ship in space on a mission when he finds something out that changes everything and he has to figure out how to get ho get back home. It's fantastic. Uh, Sam Rockwell steals, steals the show. This is basically the movie that made him one of my favorite actors working today. Watch Moon. It's fantastic. Hey guys, the next movie I have for you is one that, it's not too underseen, to be honest, but the thing is, I mean, it made a lot of money, but it is really, really underseen, and it was it was just, in my opinion, critics just missed it. It's The Incredible Brothers with Jake Gyllenhaal and with Tobey Maguire. This movie is absolutely mesmerizing. It's so powerful. It's just so gripping, and it's the story of two brothers. One is a war hero, and he gets captured. He's a prisoner of war, and his brother, who's like a no-good, Jake Gyllenhaal comes in to provide for his wife, Natalie Portman, and things start getting a little more than just providing, and that may that, that may all come into fruition. You'll have to find out. This is an incredible movie. I recommend it to everyone. I, I adore Brothers. 
A Serious Man is directed by the Coen brothers, and I have to say it is definitely their most underseen and underrated movie. Uh, it's very small. It did get nominated for some Oscars, but nobody watched it because it's a very personal movie to the Coens because they're Jewish, and this is really a movie that explores their faith, and it's about this guy called Larry, played by Michael Stuhlbarg, and I think one of his first movies, and uh, he was great. It's just this guy, bad things keep happening to him, and he just feels like a passenger in his own life. And I'm not going to spoil where the movie goes, but, you know, there are some really uh, smart allegories, and it's just a funny, dark comedy. Comedy. Definitely watch it. Cohen's at their best. Hey guys, the next movie I have for you in this really special edition cool looking DVD is Shut Up Island, directed by Martin Scorsese, stars Mark Ruffalo, Leonardo DiCaprio, really criminally underseen. Uh, should have been nominated for a lot of Oscars in my opinion, that's how good it was. It, didn't, it, it got shunned over, no one really like just kind of dismissed it as the Martin Scorsese movie that doesn't really count in the 2000s, but honestly, this is a really cool take. Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Mark Ruffalo, they're two feds, they go into Shutter Island, this massive island for the criminally insane who were too insane to be housed in mental asylums and basically uh, all things go loose they're looking for this one uh, they're looking for this one patient uh, lightning strikes well not real like figurative lightning the whole place shuts down prisoners go loose and they have to try and find this prisoner while keeping themselves alive it's an incredible movie incredible twist at the end really dramatic really, really powerful really thought-provoking towards the end as well and I recommend this one to everyone Animal Kingdom is an Australian movie and I might add my favorite Australian movie ever made uh, it was a brilliant, brilliant thriller. I think it's getting adapted into an American TV series now, but it starred James Freshville in his debut as this kid. His mum's died of a heroin overdose, so he has to go live with his grandma Smurf and, you know, all his cousins and stuff, and they're all criminals, and it just follows that and all the shit they get into and how it, uh, the kid sort of gets dragged into it as well, and it's a dark, dark movie with a fucking terrifying performance from Ben Mendelsohn. Hey guys, the next movie I have for you is Let Me In. Now, Let Me In is a, an American remake of an original foreign movie. I tend to think the American remake is actually better, which is why it's on this list. Criminally underseen. It's a classic, it's, it's a modern take on a vampire story where Chloe Grace Moretz moves into an apartment near this kid who's got deadbeat parents. He's, he doesn't really go anywhere and he befriends this girl who's a vampire and he, he doesn't really know it. He starts to figure it out. Lots of things start happening when she needs blood to survive and she sort of drags him into her life even though she doesn't want to but they really it's it's a really powerful story and honestly I watched this this year I watched this for the first time this year I've seen about maybe 150 new releases this year and honestly this is like this is like my eighth favorite first watch of the year I absolutely adored let me in really powerful stuff really really great thought-provoking stuff this is an incredible movie I recommend it to everyone we need to talk about Kevin, stars Tilda Swinton and Ezra Miller with two of the best performances of their careers. I mean, Ezra Miller is incredible in this. It's about this troubled kid and it's sort of non-linear storytelling. It tells you uh, from his childhood and kind of what made him who he is because he's sort of a sadistic, sort of evil kid. Now, I'm not going to spoil where the movie goes, but it is absolutely fucking insane and harrowing. And there is some really, really powerful imagery in this movie. If uh, There's one shot towards the end that I have not been able to get out of my mind in the two years since I've seen it, and if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I mean. The next movie I have for you is uh, by the director of one of the king of underseen movies, Richard Linklater, and this is Bernie. Bernie stars Jack Black, Shirley MacKellen, uh, sorry if I spelled that wrong, it's, no, it's McLean, and Matthew McConaughey. Well, this is, this is the true story about Bernie, uh, just, just this guy who in this town, every single person adores, he does everything right, everyone loves him, he's just the best human being, and sometimes that can be an elastic band that snaps. And Jack Black, incredible in this movie. He's a fantastic actor. He shows it to you in this. And it's just an incredible movie of how far, how far you know, th things can go when you be too nice. You've got to let off a little steam once in a while. And Bernie is a fantastic movie showing that. Take Shelter is directed by Jeff Nichols, one of the best directors working today in my opinion, and it stars Michael Shannon with a performance that should have been Oscar nominated, and it wasn't. I don't get it. There's a storm coming! Uh, it's about Michael Shannon, he's this just sort of, you know, everyday family man, and he starts having these apocalyptic visions. Uh, that he thinks are from God and that this big storm's coming. So he starts building this shelter, putting all his money into it, losing his job over it, and it sort of starts tearing his family apart. And, you know, is there going to be a storm? Is there not? Is he right? Uh, watch the movie to find out. Take Shelter is fucking brilliant in every way. Now, the next movie I have for you isn't really underseen. It actually made a lot of money, and it has a reasonably... So, uh, it, it's got a tiny budget, actually, but it made a lot, a lot of money. Like, double that budget by, like, 20 times fold. Uh, but the reason it's on this list is because everyone dismisses it as a joke, and that's Magic Mike. 
Magic Mike stars people like Channing Tatum, Joe Mangelio, uh, Matthew McConaughey. I'm sorry, I pronounced that wrong. But anyway, it's a story about. It's it's not a story about male strips. It's a story about a man who's trying to get through life, and he's trying he's trying to go on a path. And it's a movie about drugs, a movie about work, and uh, the, the element of male stripping comes into it. But what it is is a story about this one man. And honestly, people dismiss it as a joke, they go, that's the male stripping movie, but honestly, this first one, especially the first one by Steven Soderbergh, is definitely worth a watch, because it's actually a really cool character piece, and really cool spin on, like, how the underbelly of the, of the stripping world, and how bad it can actually be, it's not all glamorised. Goon. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I had to put this on the list, it's one of my all-time favourite comedies and sports movies, and it is so underrated, it came out in 2012. And nobody saw it. I only saw it because a friend introduced me to it. And it is so, so good. Goon is really, really funny. It features a career best performance from Sean William Scott as Doug Glatt, this lovable bouncer turned hockey enforcer. And it's brilliant. Jay Baruchel's great. He wrote the movie too. And it's so funny. And it has so, so much heart for a comedy. And uh, it's another one that I can watch every day and not get tired of it. Goon is fantastic. Hey guys, and the next movie I have for you is one of my favourite horror movies of all time. This is uh, written by Joss Whedon before he, right before he did The Avengers. It's directed by Drew Goddard. It's got Chris Hemsworth. It's got a lot of people in it. Uh, and this is Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods is, but it surprised me because this is criminally underseen. I thought this was a really popular movie. This is a fresh take on the horror genre. It is so, like, so meta. It's so cool. It takes every horror movie trope and spins it on its head when basically all these kids go to this cabin in the woods. And I don't even want to spoil for you, like, the, the second storyline because it's so, so freaking cool. Please watch Cabin in the Woods. It's a, it's, it's more of a, it's a horror comedy. It's not a horror. It's a horror comedy. It flips it on its head. It's so meta. Every single cliche in horror movies is in this movie and they make fun of it in such an impressive way. This is one of the most original scripts um, I, I've ever seen on screen and I love this movie so much. My favourite horror movie. Place Me on the Pines is directed by Derek Sian France and it stars Ryan Gosling, Bradley Cooper and Dandy Hahn and some other people and uh, it's just a, it's a big sweeping epic. Uh, it really makes use of the three act structure because Place Me on the Pines is really like three different movies in one. The first act really follows Ryan Gosling's character and what he does and I don't, I don't want to give away too much about the plot but Place Me on the Pines is a really really great movie and uh, it's, it's fantastic. I haven't seen it in years, I need to go back and revisit it and uh, Sian France is a great director and I can't wait for his next movie, The Light Between Oceans. Watch Place Beyond the Pines. The next movie is by another guy who could be claimed king of the underseen movies, Jeff Nichols, and this is Mud. Uh, I, I love Jeff Nichols. Shotgun Stories, incredible. Take Shelter, even better. Uh, shot, uh, freaking uh, Midnight Special, incredible. Mud, one of my favourites. Mud stars Matthew McConaughey, Ty Sheridan in a really cool role before he started getting bigger in the X-Men franchise, and uh, Reese Witherspoon, all which are amazing. Mud is basically about this guy, and he's like a hobo, he's like a myth, and he lives on this little island, and these kids go and find him, and he starts telling him to do stuff, because he's, he's just, he's so charismatic and these these kids they they, they want like mud to like him and they, they, it's just a really incredible coming of age movie one of the best coming of age movies of the 2010s especially it's it's, it's a really well made movie and i recommend this to everyone safety not guaranteed is another small movie that came out in 2012 directed by colin trevorrow who went on to do jurassic world which wasn't that great but uh it stars aubrey plaza and jake johnson and uh the guy who went on to play dopinder and deadpool uh, as these news reporters and they go to investigate the story of this guy who uh, is basically saying, look, I can time travel, I need a partner, bring your own weapons, safety's not guaranteed. So they go to do sort of a silly story on it, but Aubrey Plaza's character, who she's a bit weird too, and she ends up clicking with the guy and they end up becoming friends. And the movie's a big can he or can't he time travel. Uh, it's a fantastic indie movie and it has one of my favorite endings of any movie ever. The next movie by my favourite McDonough, Martin McDonough, is Seven Psychopaths. Seven Psychopaths is an incredibly funny movie. It is absolutely hilarious. It gets really meta at the end. It is so funny. Sam Rockwell is amazing in this. It's also got Colin Farrell, Woody Harrelson, Christopher Walken, Abby Cornish, Tom Walsh, so many people that all come to play here. It's about a guy trying to write a book about the seven psychopaths, and then outside as well, there are seven psychopaths, and they're all, like, they're killing people, they're, there's just so much cool stuff. The graveyard scene at the end, one of the best graveyard scenes in any movie of all time. It is so funny, it is so cool to watch. Sam Rockwell especially, amazing in this movie. This is my favourite McDonough movie out of all the brothers, uh, all their movies, and I can't wait to see what he does next because Seven Psychopaths is an awesomely fun time. 
Inside Lewin Davis is the second Coen Brothers movie on this list, and rightly so, because they're great. And Inside Lewin Davis, I think, is their best movie. It stars Oscar Isaac as this struggling musician, Lewin Davis, uh, in like the 50s and 60s in Greenwich Village, where all the folk music scene was. And, uh, you know, it's a brilliant performance from Oscar Isaac that should have been Oscar nominated. The music's beautiful, and it's such a smart movie. Uh, there's this cat in the movie that really is, is a allegory for his dead partner, at least that's my interpretation of it, but it's a fantastic movie, uh, definitely check it out, it's very soulful, the cinematography is beautiful, the lighting's beautiful, and uh, it gets better every time I watch it. Now I've been using this a lot, one of my favourites of all time, blah blah blah, but this actually is one of my favourites, this is this may even be my favourite coming of age movie of all time, and I, I know it's really really recent, but it's The Way Way Back. The Way Way Back starring Steve Carell, uh, Lee, it says and Liam James at the end, even though he's the main character, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, Steve Carell in a really opposite role for him, Tony Collette, uh, lots of people like that, Alison Janney, Anna Sophia Robb, Sam Rockwell again, and this is an incredible movie about a boy who goes away for the summer, he goes to this place, he really keeps to himself, he, he's got dad issues which come to play later in the movie, he stays with his mum and his stepdad Steve Carell, he's just an absolute asshole, and he, he, go, he ends up going to this uh, water park run by Sam Rockwell and he really gets him to come out of his shell and express his feelings more and start to become more of a human being, and it's a complete turnaround and the way, way back, Please watch it. It's got a really, really dramatic climax. It gets me to tear up every time. It's really sad. It's just an awesome movie, The Way Way Back. It really connects with me. I really connect to the main character. We have the same sort of tropes, same sort of issues growing up, and I just, I, I absolutely adore this movie. One of my favourites. Enemy is directed by Denis Villeneuve, known for Prisoners and Sicario, and Enemy was definitely his most underseen and underappreciated film, because it's very weird. You will watch Enemy, and you will not know what the fuck is going on, and some people will like this, and some people will hate it, but I think it's a movie that everyone should see, and it's fun trying to figure out the message of the movie, and it has a crazy, terrifying ending, and uh, if you do want to look for an explanation on Enemy, what Enemy, watch Chris Duckman's uh, analysis on it. I think he hit the nail on the head with it. And Enemy is just a weird movie with a great performance from Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, we're getting serious for this one. This movie came out in 2013. It's more recent. Uh, it, it made its budget back, but not much past that. Many people, not many people see it. Uh, and this is Rush by Ron Howard. Rush by Ron Howard stars Chris Hemsworth, Daniel Brawl, and a role he should have been Oscar nominated for. He almost won the bloody Golden Globe. Wasn't even nominated for the Oscar, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion, because he is fantastic. This movie is about the true story of two Formula One racers who are just so driven against each other. Uh, Nicky Lauda and... Um, James Hunt, they're just so driven against each other, and uh, one is James Hunt, they're, none of them are the bad guy, they're both equal, James Hunt is driven by passion for the sport, Nick Lauda is driven by statistics, and you know, he's really good at it, so he does it, he's really by the book, he doesn't believe in passion, he just believes in getting the job done, and uh, conflicts come to play, it's really emotional, it's a true story, and it's directed so freaking well, the cinematography, amazing, the score is just incredible, There's no, this, this is just one of the most well-crafted movies I've seen in a long time. And it's probably like my sixth favorite movie of all time. I think it's it, it's just it's just incredible. Please watch Rush. Short Term Twelve is a movie I'm really passionate about. It stars Brie Larson as Grace, this uh, twenty-something-year-old worker in this home for like troubled children and stuff. And it's brilliant. Uh, it really put Brie Larson on the map as as a dramatic actress and uh, led to her Oscar-winning performance in Room. But uh, Short Term Twelve is great. Uh, it has a lot of heart. Great performances from all the kids, and there's also a lot going on behind the scenes with her character and uh, her troubled past and everything. And it's a great little movie. It'll make you laugh, smile, and cry. And Brie Larson's fantastic. She should have been Oscar nominated for this. Uh, Short Term Twelve. Next, we're going to action with one of the best action movies of all of all time, starring Yuko Iko Uyas. Directed by Gareth Evans, not Edwards, Evans, the better one, and this is The Raid 2. We could have put either of them on here, but The Raid 2 makes it because basically it's what The Raid is, uh, you know, really fast-paced action in a building, expanded into two and a half hours with a mob storyline, so much extra stuff, and this is just incredible. All the prison fight scenes, amazing. The ch car chase scene, incredible. Uh, there's a hammer girl, there, there, there's, there's two bad guys called hammer girl, baseball bat guy, throws a ball up, hits it with a baseball bat, all those things. It's just like the Godfather on steroids after he's drunk a, just a, a, a three litre energy drink and on speed is the Raid 2. Perfectly directed action. The best directed action I've ever seen. Please watch this. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's got a lot of dialogue unlike the first one and you know it's in another language so you have to read it but it's, it is worth it. This movie is amazing. These Final Hours is another Australian movie. I talked about it in my best films of 2014 list. Uh, it's 
fantastic. It's uh, the world's ending. It's set in Perth, Australia. The world's ending, and everyone is heading to this party to end all parties, where everyone's just going to go crazy on drugs and alcohol and stuff, and just to party away until the world ends. And it's about this guy who's on his way to this party, but he finds a young girl, rescues her from being raped. Uh, the girl's played by Angori Rice, who went on to be in The Nice Guys, and uh, he saves her and ends up dedicating his last day on Earth to trying to help her reunite with her family. And it's just a really, really beautiful movie about trying to do something good with your life. The next movie I have for you is an Australian movie, South Australian movie, uh, directed by Jennifer Kent, um, and this is The Barbadook. Essie Davis, Oscar worthy in this, Daniel Henschel, The Little Kid. Amazing, one of the best child performances I've ever seen. The Babadook is incredible, it's not a movie about horror, it's a story about grief, about a mother dealing with grief, and it's directed through horror, it's so smart, it's so incredible, The Babadook is definitely worth a watch. Please watch this, one of the greatest Australian horror movies to come out, better than The Wolf Creeks. The Skeleton Twins is a comedy drama starring SNL alums Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig in career best performances. It's about these brother and sister haven't seen each other for 10 years and they're very, very dysfunctional. Uh, Milo, who's played by Bill Hader, he's gay and he's suicidal and stuff. And uh, so they end up, you know, spending some time together. And it's just a movie about them, these characters living their lives and their past and everything. And Bill Hader is a fucking revelation in this movie. I think he's worthy of an Oscar nomination in it. He's brilliant, and I can't. I hope to see Bill Hader do more dramatic work because he's absolutely fucking fantastic in this. And it has the best lip syncing scene ever. One of the next movies, probably another movie you haven't even heard of, The Two Faces of January. The Two Faces of January stars Viggo Mortensen, Kirsten Dunst, Oscar Isaac, and it's an old send-up of old spy movies, really cool espionage, uh, you know, just, it's directed so cool. The colour palette is really sweet. I just re-watched it, and, you know, the score is amazing. Cinematography, beautiful. One of the best directed movies, and it's just a great send-up. It's so feel-good, it's really cool, some cool twists in there, awesome characters, it's just a really awesome movie. I recommend watching this. It's just, it's so freaking cool. Predestination is an Australian movie that's set in America starring Ethan Hawke and it's about time travel. Uh, they're, they're his temporal agent. Uh, these time travelers who go back in time to stop crimes before they happen. So yeah, you're thinking Minority Report, but this is completely different to Minority Report and it has a fucking incredible performance from Sarah Snook, an Australian actress. She plays the unmarried mother. Uh, a woman who uh, became a man and she's fantastic. She steals the show in this movie and uh, it's just, yeah, I'm not going to give too much away about the plot, but Predestination is a fantastic little sci-fi movie. The next movie I have for you is a revenge movie and basically this is uh, called The Rover. The Rover's really cool. The Rover stars Robert Patterson. And Guy Pearce, and basically Guy Pearce gets his car stolen, and it's him going across Australia, it's another Australian movie, trying to find this car with Robert Patterson, and it's just really cool. Robert Patterson, take him as a joke, he is incredible in this, he is Oscar worthy in this movie. He was one of my favourite supporting performances of that year, it's just an incredible movie, really good looking movie, awesome characters, really cool, and the resolution is just so worth it, I absolutely loved it. The soundtrack is actually really cool too. Under the Skin is directed by Jonathan Glazer, and it's a very divisive movie, but it's a brilliant movie with a great performance from Scarlett Johansson. She plays this alien who comes to Earth and is basically just harvesting dudes' souls. Nothing is explained to us, nothing is said. There's a lot of ad lib in it where she actually went and picked up men, and then they got him to sign the release and be in the film later. So a lot of these performances are just actual people who didn't know they were in a movie. It's a very weird movie. It's set in Scotland, and... Uh, it's, again, a very, very smart and subversive movie, and uh, I just think you should check it out. I mean, it's a, just fucking interesting. And the last movie from me that I have for you is a movie directed by France, Francis Coppola's uh, daughter, Gia Coppola, and this is Palo Alto. It's the very first film by Gia Coppola, I believe. It's got Dave Franco, sorry, James Franco, the better Franco, Emma Roberts, Nat Wolf, Jack Kilmer. It's really, really cool. What it is, it's, it's all different storylines weaved into each other about love, about growing up, a uh, really coming-of-age movie, but a really hardcore sexualized coming-of-age movie um, about, you know, there's one storyline is a girl and she's got a crush on her teacher, James Franco, and that comes into fruition, um, and the wrongs and rights of that. There's there's, there's there's this bully who's just a fuckboy, and this girl who's a slut, and she doesn't know how to express her love with, in, uh, without having sex. Like, she has sex with a guy, expecting her to love him, he leaves her, she just, she can't stop, like, it's, it's just how her brain works, it's a really cool movie, it really expresses how teenagers are these days, it's really, really good, it's directly on target, if you're a teenager, this is your type of movie, I got recommended for this by my girlfriend, incredible movie, so happy, shout out to her right there, I love you Molly, and this is just, incredible movie, I love it. 
And last but not least is Calvary, directed by John Michael McDonough, the brother of Martin McDonough, who made Seven Psychopaths and stuff. He's known for The Guard, and he directed the Ned Kelly movie, and Calvary is pretty much a straight-up drama starring Brendan Gleeson as he's a good priest. He's a very, very nice priest, and he receives a death threat that he's going to be killed in a week. And the movie is just about him uh, doing the rounds, talking to the townsfolk, sort of trying to figure out who wants to kill him and stuff. And it's just a movie about forgiveness and stuff, and it really, really shows a lot of the good in religion, which, uh, you know, it was good to see in a movie. And uh, it's a fantastic performance from Brendan Gleeson, and a brilliant ending. So, that's it for our list. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it spurs you on to go check out some of these movies. And uh, I know I tried to rattle through everything very quickly, because if we took longer, this movie would end up being like an hour long. So thanks for having me, Jacob. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully I wasn't too annoying for your viewers. Um, I All these movies I'm really passionate about, so I'm glad I got to talk about them today. This is a really important list, I believe. A list that, uh, you know, should have been seen more. And uh, all these movies, I hope you can either... I, I, you probably can't be able to watch all of them, but, you know, you can try. These are movies that if you, if you don't know what you want to watch, you can just come back here. You can look at this list. Oh, that one sounds cool. Pick that out. Because all these movies deserve more recognition. Thanks for having me, guys. But, you know, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking by my channel, I love all you guys, and, uh, yeah, that's it, stick around, subscribe if you enjoyed it.